the thoughts, views, and opinions are that of my own. I am not a salesman. I cannot be bought. This is all entertainment. Y'all know what time it is. Let's go. Peace, peace, peace. Mic check, mic check. One, two, one, two. This is your host, EQ. And welcome to the Cypher. A cipher is a person, place, a thing within my circumference. The understanding of the cipher is peace. We are filming live from Prince George's County, Maryland. Pretty Girl County. Y'all know what time it is. Put the fire in the chat. Let's go. I want to see. Y'all already know it's a verse since people. Let's get fired up. We're going to have a good time. And we're bringing on a legend. But before we do it, y'all know what time it is. Put y'all scent of the days in the chat. My drink of choice tonight is going to be water because I cannot slip up with the legend. <laughs> the legend himself. How y'all feeling tonight? Peace. I see you, JN, from Boston. Appreciate you. I see the fire in the chat. Let me see the center of the days go off. Let's go. Y'all already know tip the bartender. If you it's your first time here, be sure to hit the like button. I appreciate it. It costs you nothing. It is free. But we're going to have a good time. This is a celebration for Fragcom. Y'all know how I feel about it. This is my brainchild. This is my baby. An opportunity to bring people on to collaborate. Let's go. Man. I had to dig in the crates. Peace, 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 and more peace. Mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two. Y'all already know what time it is. Y'all know the vibes. Let's get hype. It's 85 of y'all in here. I know before the end of the night, we're going to have about 200 at least. So y'all already know, please do me a favor. Hit the like button in the chat. Admins, 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 and more admins. Y'all know what the routine is police the chats y'all know i have zero tolerance for disrespect to me or the guest we give no warnings out here people who enter the cypher should know my stance on that boot them and ban them that's just it there's no warning there's no timeout. just get them out the way peace family jared i appreciate the super chat one of my admins I'm going to need you to be working overtime tonight to make sure the comments are on point. People hit the like button. So y'all already know what time it is. Today, we're going to be doing the top 10 fragrance notes. That's how I title it. Myself and the perfume guy will be going head to head in a verse sense. This is episode number 22 of The Cypher. 22 lives I've been going with you all. I only do like maybe twice a week, once a week live. So I appreciate all the support for that. I'm looking at all those um, center of the days and I appreciate that. Before we start, I'm going to pay the bills. Y'all know what the bills are. That is when I give you my center of the day. So my center of the day is a fragrance that I've been wearing. I've been enjoying the house since I have discovered it. Um, when I went to uh, Neiman's and Saks up Tyson's Corner, Virginia, if you don't know, um, like 20, 30 minutes down the road from me, I can go to pretty much smell everything from the Chanel Boutique, the YSL Boutique, Celine Boutique, Louis Vuitton Boutique, Saks, Bloomingdale's, Nordstrom, <laughs> Macy's, everything, you know, <laughs> everything's there. Neiman's, everything is there. Um, and they recently got this house in maybe earlier this year, I believe. And that's from the house of X Nihilo. And this is Viper Green. This is a fragrance, I believe. Sebastian did a talk on this when he did his Galbanum fragrances, I believe. It was green. I think that might have been, what, maybe a few weeks ago he did that. Um, this is a green fragrance. This is all about Galbanum. That bitter greenness, you get some vetiver and mandarin orange. It's fairly, and there's a little bit of floral nuance in here that's not listed when you look it up, but there is a floral component in here that I just can't, more like a white floral, like almost like a neroli or something, there's, or angelica. This is a beautiful fragrance. I get great longevity. This isn't something that's going to fill up a room, and I'm talking about viper green, 
But this is something that just will linger and waft in the hair, in the air. Fresh, green, cut grass, an amazing green fragrance. This house is expensive. It is. I'm not going to lie to you. It is expensive house, but I'm not, I'm not a salesman and I'm not about to count your pockets. Um, get a sample, figure it out on your own. That is my sin of the day. But before we bring the guest in, y'all already know what we got to do. We have to give a proper intro. I've said this numerous times. I've been following this brother for a long time. He's one of the premier OGs in the game. Well over eight years. I'm talking on YouTube. <laughs> that is crazy when you think about it. He had an older channel. I forgot what the name of that is. Um, but he'll let us know the name, the old channel. Um, I know it was something else. Some things happened and that channel went away. And he had to start over. I've always said I used to go on this channel before he hit 100K and say, bro, like you're probably one of the most underrated, unappreciated fragrance channels in all of YouTube. I just say that all on his comments. And it just was what it was. This brother gives you not only fragrances you never heard of, not talking about the same old fragrances all the time. And this is how he inspired me to go outside the box. When everybody's going right, I go left. Partially due to Sebastian um, just talking about stuff that no one's talking about. He's allowed me or have almost taught me that I need to explore and get out of the box. His first, he started his, uh, he had to rebrand his channel eight years ago on June 13th of 2015. So that was a few days ago, almost an eight year reunion, Sebastian, <laughs> seeing the background. That was, that was in, that was smelling great fragrances. That's what he first started off is, but now he's branded himself. He has created um, his own platform where he's doing his own scent discoveries since, and he'll give an opportunity to talk about that. Um, he's now known as the perfume guy who he has um, copyright on that. So no, you cannot use that. On YouTube, He now he's been working really hard, and I've always said consistency and constantly dropping videos will help your channel grow. Um, if I did that more, I would probably have a larger channel, but I don't. But he has 230K subs with over 2.3K videos on YouTube. On IG, over 107K followers with 4.1K posts. Again, over eight years in the game, I said there's a few people who inspired me. Big Beard Business allowed me and taught me that I can come in as myself and be myself in my own image. And there was room for me. Cuba taught me that I can say what I want to say out of my mouth and be keep it 100% real with y'all. Because I don't think nobody keeps it more real than my man Cuba. And Sebastian taught me to think outside the box and also educate myself. He's, the, man, this brother got work. If you're not familiar with him, I can go on and on days with the, from the reviews to the education to learning what is patchouli. What is a sheepra? What does vetiver smell like? What is amber? What is resins? If you want to be educated, this brother knows it all. I'm about to bring him on. I want to give a warm round of applause. Y'all know what it is for my guests. I want to see money in the chat for the one, the only, D legend, the perfume guy. Let's bring him on. Hey, everyone. How's I, it going? How you Glad doing? to be here. How you doing today? I'm doing good. Uh, as I was mentioning to you, I have bronchitis, so I'm getting over bronchitis. Um, I got a really bad flu in April, and this is the lingering effects of um, uh, this flu. So it developed into a bronchial infection. So mm. I'm still under the weather, but since I agreed to do this, I thought I was going to get better. Uh, I decided to go ahead and do this for you because I've never done this, so I appreciate you inviting me on to do this well i appreciate you coming on um and we've talked before via chats and you know i said you know i love what you do um very inspirational um very educational and exposing people to fragrances that they wouldn't see on any other algorithm so i appreciate that for you so guys y'all know what it yeah. is this is a verse sense we're gonna get to it the battle is the notes 
What are going to be the notes that we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about these notes and in this order. The notes will be patchouli, oud, amber, tobacco, leather, rose, boozy, gourmands, musk, and citrus. I mean, we could have did vetivers. We could have kept going on. And there's so many different notes, but I tried to pick something that I thought we that would be good for us. We both love these notes. So that is going to be what the notes are. Um, as we always said, if you're just your first time here, thank you for joining. Please hit the like button. We're going to talk about how these fragrances will be discussed. Y'all already know if you've been here before. If you haven't, we will go over the scent overview. That is like a quick review of fragrances. We will talk about occasions, occasions for wear on the fragrance, how we wear it, uh, projection and longevity. I know watching Sebastian for years, it, it, he doesn't really get all into that on his um, reviews, and I don't really care much for it, but y'all do, so we're going to try to help y'all out and at least give y'all some insight on that. We will talk about the compliment rating and compliment factor. Basically, are they mass appealing? Are they challenging? Is this something that will get a lot of looks from people? The type of person this is for, age, style, um, things of that nature, and how to wear it, which is how many sprays that we normally put on based on the environment that we do. So, y'all know the routine, people. We're going to go ahead and get this party going. Let's As go. with all my versants, we switch at halftime. We're going to start off with patchouli and the perfume guy. You have the floor. Okay. So, we're starting off with my favorite note. Uh, it's my number one favorite note. Uh, followed by vanilla. So I'm glad he had me go first. And of course, this is one that I always talk about on the channel. Uh, it's Psychedelic from uh, Jovoy. Uh, probably the ultimate in patchouli fragrances and uh, definitely the chocolate cakey kind. It's not gourmand, but what happens is when they add the ambery notes and resins and vanilla, and when they blend it with the patchouli, the earthiness, it creates a chocolate cakey effect. So there's that sweetness in there. So I really love this one. I've been hyping it since the day I discovered it in 2015 at their store in Paris. Absolutely love it. And I think at that time, nobody was talking about the psychedelic. I just completely fell in love with the name. I love the idea of psychedelic things. And uh, I love patchouli. And definitely uh, patchouli from the psychedelic 60s to the 70s. And now we're wearing it as a fragrance. I love that idea. So um, occasion to wear it. Um, winter for sure i mean i have to say i don't have any rules with fragrances whatsoever if you like what you wear wear whenever you want to wear it if you feel like it kind of a thing but this is not a summer fragrance i guess uh if you want to do it in the summertime once one spray two sprays so occasions maybe evenings uh not at work kind of a thing it does have pretty uh you know decent uh, longevity uh, and then also projection is pretty nice as well, but I wouldn't call it an uber beast mode fragrance. I've garnered compliments with patchouli. I love patchouli, and I think people do tend to like it as well. Um, it's not for everybody, though. Uh, I know there are haters out there, and sometimes people associate it with body odor. I don't know why. It's not cumin or anything like that. Uh, I, I would say it's a mature fragrance for sure, but anyone that's into the niche perfume world and appreciates uh, patchouli, uh, will definitely like this one. And I, I wear like 10 to 12 sprays. That's what I do with psychedelic. That's my normal. I'm not a two, three kind of spray guy unless I'm going to be with someone that it does not like uh, fragrances. But yeah, psychedelic is probably one of the best patchouli fragrances out there. Who's a fan of this one? I know y'all fans. Y'all are fans of that one. I knew that was going to get played. If you watch his channel, you just know that's he's been very consistent. It is that is his favorite patchouli. And I this patchouli I'm going to talk about is for my number 10 is a patchouli that I want this brother to get his nose on. This is from a house that doesn't get a lot of play. This patchouli is dark. Had, is extremely complex, it's earthy, has some chocolatey notes, and it's also boozy. This is coming from the house of Oriza Legrand, and this is Horizon. Now, this fragrance to me is criminally underpriced. I believe, I'm talking about retail, you can get this for like 200 bucks. <laughs> like from Lucky Scent somewhere, retail. 
what you get here, you get some, you get a coarse patchouli, but it's supported when the first spray is on with some cognac. So you get cognac, tobacco. So it becomes this tobacco boozy leather patchouli that's also a little cakey and nutty because almonds in there. So it's creamy, chocolatey, boozy. Again, this is for somebody who actually likes patchouli. If you are not a patchouli person, this isn't that. There are other wearable patchoulis for those who really aren't that much in the patchouli, such as like Unique A Luxuries Crush on You, but this is the earthy type. It's slightly soily, but not too dirty. But you get, it's extremely complex. It's changing. Booze. So booze and tobacco, leather, patchouli. But as it goes into the mid and it starts to change, it gets creamier as the almond comes in. Absolutely stunning. This is very rich. And when I say rich, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about the density of the fragrance. So occasions, when is this for? This is for cooler weather only. Listen, wear fragrances whenever you want to wear them. But for me, I'm only wearing um, Horizon in the cooler weather. I'm talking winter because it's just that rich. And I will wear that with like a turtleneck. I will wear it casually if I'm going out. But again, in the air, I know like on test strip, as soon as you put it on skin, but in the air, as people smell those gourmand and boozy notes with the patchouli, I'm telling you, fall and sometimes winter, especially when it's cold, it just absolutely works, especially when that cool breeze comes off of your skin. Projection and longevity. This isn't a room filler. This isn't some way, something that somebody can smell you across the hallway. I mean, unless you're putting like 25 sprays on, then it can be very overpowering. Patchouli is one of those kind of notes that's a hit and miss with people. So I tend to, when I wear it, I, at least this fragrance, I want people to get wafts, subtle hints and wafts of it, different elements as I pass by them. So with this fragrance, I sort of only go about about four sprays, three, four sprays, depending on what I'm doing, where I'm at. If I'm at a bar and I'm be sitting beside people, I might only go two sprays. If I'm going to be moving outside through the crowd, then I might go about five, maybe six sprays. That's about where I tend to keep this fragrance on. Um, compliment rating, compliment factor is not something that's going to be highly complimented. This is one that is for patchouli lovers. You must love patchouli. But this is one that people will remember. It will be like, ooh, what are you wearing? I've gotten that. But I haven't received a ton of compliments, so I'm not going to say it's a compliment monster. Um, type of person is for, again, a person who likes patchouli. And that is my number 10. And that is for patchouli. And this is from Larisa Legrand. And this is Horizon. You on, brother. By the way, I know that fragrance and I've wanted to buy it. For some reason, I keep skipping it because I love that brand. Nobody talks about them. And I keep buying other things because it does remind me of a lot of other patchouli fragrances I have. Yeah, but it, it is a great fragrance. It really is. And if you're a patchouli lover, it's one of those like if you're a patchouli lover, you at least at least have to get a sample of it, in my opinion. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're going into Oud in the floor is yours. So funny, I have a Oud video launching tomorrow and this was ranked at number one. I'm giving you guys a clue. This is an actually a designer Oud video. This is from the house of Givenchy and it's their hotel particular collection that nobody talks about. This is Noctambule. Mm. Um, it's an Oud and Rose combo. And uh, I believe it has two different types of uh, rose distillation from grass. And uh, of course, the oud, I believe it's either Indonesian or Malaysian oud. Uh, there's Cipriol in there. And then I think, well, I don't know where the cumin comes in from. Uh, and when I'm wearing it, there's definitely the idea of cumin in there. I know people don't like cumin, but just the right amount of it is in here makes it uber sexy. And absolutely love this one. Really, really love it. It's very wearable. It's kind of like an alternative to Udispahan, if you like it. And uh, Ana Ayo is the name of the perfumer who created it. And until 
until I bought this fragrance, I didn't know who this perfumer was. She worked at Furmanich. And it's absolutely gorgeous and really, really fantastic to wear. It's kind of a fusion of lots of fresh notes with some warmth. I believe there's a little vanilla in there to give it some sweetness. I wouldn't say this is beastly or anything. I just love the way it smells. It smells super fantastic. And the fact that I get a little bit of um, cumin in there, uh, it just makes for a really great wearing experience. I'm obsessed with cumin. I can we wear fragrances with cumin with an overdose of cumin. But with this one, it's just the right amount with the rose, the oud, and the cypriol. So this is right now one of my favorite oud fragrances, Noctambule from Givenchy. I believe Nordstrom carries this line. Mm. How many sprays? I, I don't know if I remember hearing you saying about how many. Is this something that's very wearable, like mass appealing or what's your thoughts on that? Well, is Oudis behind ma mass appealing? I don't think so. So yeah. uh, anybody into Rosen Oud is going to like that one. Uh, but uh, it's not it's not like an uber intense fragrance. So mm. you'll have to pile it on in order to make people a lot of people smell you. But with that one, if you're wearing it maybe in a hot day, uh, you know, you sprayed maybe three sprays, four sprays. And throughout the day, you'll you'll smell wafts of it when your body temp heats up. So outstanding. Outstanding. So okay. I knew I was you was gonna bring out some heat and something people didn't know about. So I had to dig in the crates. So I said to myself, if we're going to talk about oud, I'm going to bring a fragrance that's not rose and oud, straight up oud. This is probably, in my opinion, one of the best singular oud fragrances out on the market that you can get. And it's not going to cost you $1,000 to get it. This fragrance is all about the different contrast between Indian oud, Cambodian oud, and sensual white musk in all of its glory. This is from the house of Arabian Oud, and this is Blue Oud. Now, people say Oud do not get compliments. I beg to differ. <laughs> Oud gets compliments. Now, to describe this fragrance, there's a it's so complex, there's a lot going on. Oud by itself, because I have some atars. And this also, if you buy it in the pack, comes with almost two tolas. A tola, I believe, is like 12 mLs. You, you get two tolas, so it's like 22 mLs, almost, almost two tolas of pure oud oil with the same thing in here. So what do you do? You open it up. For those who aren't used to it, let me get this open. And you swipe it on your pulse points absolutely heavenly this oud when you wear it is almost ethereal so you get indian oud when you first spray it on you get something that's very woody dry slightly animalic but nothing crazy when i say animalic what do i mean i mean slightly earthy hints of earth dry woody spicy so it's not that so indian oud there's several different types of it that can go in different ways. I have some like 30 year old age oud. That's an expensive bottle, but that oud is crazy. This isn't that. It doesn't go into that like swamp <laughs> kind of oud. This is very wearable, but then you get that musk, that oud and musk, but that Cambodian oud peeks through and starts dominating it and the oud, regular oud and the Indian oud starts to fall back. With Cambodian oud, you get something that has sort of red berries. So you will smell this and you will think roses in here, but it's not. So you get Cambodian oud, red berries, ambery, dry, woody. When you pair this fragrance with the pure oud oil of this, and I believe you can get this retail, I think like $400, give or take, which for what you get, and this is real oud. This isn't synthetic oud. This isn't, a additive this is real ooh when you pair that and it starts to waft off a of skin it is probably one of the most beautiful things you can ever experience you will constantly smell yourself so that's what occasions i think if you're ooh lover you can wear ood all year round for occasions in my personal opinion i have ouds that i might wear tomorrow with this ood though it's a little bit dense 
But depending on how you wear it, like at summer nights or spring nights, you can wear it and it's just going to pop off the skin. So it comes down to how much do you like? Ooh, um, projection and longevity. It's one of those leave a scent trail. It's not a room filler. Of course, if I put 30 sprays of this on, it will probably dominate a room. But overall, it's not a room filler, but wafts in the scent trail, especially with the pure oud oil. And with that, you can rub it in and it's coming off the of skin. You put it on your pulse points. Listen, when I say ethereal, mesmerizing, and divine, this is what I'm talking about. Compliment rating and compliment factor. Me personally, I have received compliments. Nothing that stops people in their tracks. But I've been out at night. If I'm going to a hookah bar or if I'm going to a cigar lounge or in the fall and winter anytime, that's when I would wear that. And how many sprays? Again, I always layer my pulse points, wrist, back of the ears, um, in the middle of the chest and rub it in. And sometimes the back of the hand and just rub it in. Let that set for a while. Then I might spray over this like four times, a little bit on clothes. And that's all I wear and let the magic do what the magic do. That's from Arabian Oud, one of the best pure real Ouds you can buy. And that's Blue Oud. Familiar with that one. Yeah, it, it is. It is. <laughs> I've What's been getting price? into Atars. I've been getting really into Atars. And, and when you start pairing it in real Oud, oh, man, the way it just comes off the of skin is amazing. And you know that um, in the from the Middle East, right? I'm Lebanese born. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. Yeah. But I'm Armenian, but I'm Lebanese born. So I grew up in the Middle East. But what's the price point on that one? Um. So this one, I believe retail, it should be under $500. Don't quote me. It's been a while. Ooh, that's but, a pricey one. <laughs> yes. But I believe it's more like 400 But there is an eBay, a real 100%. Anybody who's bought anything off eBay, Q Perfector or Q Percenter or something, he, he's from Kuwait. So it's coming from Saudi. Because you can okay. get it over there. You can probably get both of these in the 200, two, 300, 279. And for what you get is <laughs> bar none. And, and to be honest, I might be overpricing it. Somebody leave in the comments, look it up, Arabian Oud, and put the price of this. I believe as well. I believe it's under $400 because I don't believe I paid that much. It might be wow. like 270 But wow. for what you get with also the pure Oud oil is <laughs> magnificent. Okay. I'm going to have to look it up. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for introducing me something new. I haven't even heard of that one. Yeah, it's it's amazing. So it is. I, I can't speak highly of it when it comes okay. to straight ood. We're going into one of your next favorite notes. We're going yeah. into Amber. Top you got five. Uh, well, this is probably one of my top five. Well, yeah, one of my favorite Amber fragrances. It's from the House of Maitre Parfumeur de Gantier. For sure, this is uh, Ombre Presso. See, can we see that? I've actually featured this one in Scent Club kit number four. Uh, and um, yeah, this is uh, one of the best. It's been around since the 80s, so it might be a bit old school. And created by Jean Laporte, who started L'Artisan Parfumer after he sold that brand. He started this brand. He's no longer with us in the world. But this is absolutely an amazing spicy amber fragrance. Uh, for sure, it has resins and balsams, vanilla. It has aromatics like geranium and lavender uh, and, of course, uh, the, uh, the amber notes uh, to create for a really, really gorgeous wear. It's intense, uh, pretty uh, overwhelming. Uh, it can fill a room, but it's not like extremely overwhelming. And I don't receive comments uh, or compliments from uh, this kind of a fragrance uh, personally. But let's say, for example, occasion to wear, I think it's a summertime, not summertime, wintertime wear for sure. Again, no rules. Uh, projection longevity, I discussed uh, compliments. I don't know. I haven't received compliments uh, with this one. And the type of person, probably mature. It's been around since the eight, uh, 80s, as I said, the latter part of the 80s. Uh, and I think if you like the idea of uh, amber fragrances and the way the amber fragrances smell, uh, you're definitely going to enjoy this one because it's definitely one of the most popular and I can't get enough of the way it smells. Anyway, Ombre Perso, I love this one. Really, really great fragrance. Uh, check it out if you don't know it, but if you follow me, you probably heard me talking about this. Uh, and uh, if you bought Scent Club Kit number four, it was in Scent Club Kit number four recently as well. Outstanding. And to say how good it is, this, I have it. 
This <laughs> is my, depending on the day of the week, this is my number one Amber or my number two Amber, depending on the day of the week. It is the epitome of what an Amber fragrance should follow. I feel like yeah. everybody who's came after this has done this fragrance. Um, depending on how you wear it on skin, it does this slightly animalic, but I, uh, this is this is a love for me. When you say Amber in the dictionary, this should be it. And I told <laughs> you're it, right. I told absolutely. It, it, it's everything follows that. It is the king of Amber's, whether you have a favorite or not. So that's a good one. You play. Can you believe one. before you go on with your job? Can you believe that that brand has four different amber fragrances? Yeah. So okay. So I smelt the X straight. It's good. Actually, with the X straight, it's five. <laughs> yes, I smelt the X straight of this. It's good, but I asked myself, was it good enough for me to buy another bottle? For me, um, if I didn't have this one, I probably would go X straight. It's a yeah. little bit richer. And there's yeah. elements in it that I like the way it hits off the skin. But when you have this, I don't really know if you really need that unless you're just a collector. And what exactly. do you think? Yeah. No, yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, it's for the real fans of Ambers. If you have one, you don't need the other. But if you are obsessed with Ambers, definitely get both. But they also have Ombre Mythique, Ombre Tibet. Uh, and then there's another one that I don't know much about. So that brand is known for Amber. They love their Ambers. Real quick, before we go on, have you heard that Guerlain's dropping Honey Tobacco, a new fragrance? I've oh, seen it I floating did. around. I did not know this. Yeah, their, their private their, their private collection. I, I've seen it floating around in groups called Honey Tobacco. I said, I'm, go, I'm going to Neiman's. As soon as it comes, I have okay. it. Okay. I'm, I'm paying retail for that. I know you're going to have it. Part of me saying I should That's... wait for you to get it. But that sounds I, good. Yeah, I'll, I'll share it with you on IG when we get off of here. But it's, it's Honey Tobacco. I haven't seen it on Guerlain's page, but I've seen it, pictures of it in the group. We'll see how real it is, but that that sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. I love that uh, combo. Yes. So we're going to go with Amber in my number eight. So that was a tough one because I was going to play that. And I have a few Ambers I consider that are grails. Of course, Amber Absolute from Tom Ford is a grail Amber. I was going to play um, um, Ombre uh, Persepolis, but y'all have heard me talk about that amber, and y'all know that's my favorite amber. But there's another amber that I want to play um, that is just as good as Tom Ford's Amber Absolute, if you ask me. This is from Perfuma Roma. This is Ombre Aria. Now, my bottle got all scratched up, and the thing came off. But this fragrance here... <laughs> It is rich, dense. When you spray Perfume Aroma fragrances on you, <laughs> you can see the oil sheen hit the back of your hand or wherever you put it. Be careful on clothing, especially if you're wearing something white. This is off of my skin. It almost has this gourmand edge, and I don't know where that's coming from. It's extremely like benzoin heavy to me. You get myrrh. You get incense so you get amber incense i feel like i'm getting some woods in here this is one of this is a top five amber i'm not gonna i don't care what amber comes out it is top five i will not argue with anybody over it it is an amazing resinous balsamic amber so you have to be an amber fan to absolutely love this fragrance rich ambers because of its richness, this is one that I think needs to be worn in the colder weather in the winter. Ambers, because it can be a little sticky, I don't really wear this. And if I was going to wear this like a summer night, maybe if I'm near the water somewhere, if I'm on a boat. But even then, I just got other fragrances I would prefer to wear in the summer. So I save this extremely for winter. An amazing fragrance, bar none. Top five amber, and that's ombre aria. Occasions again, winter projection longevity. This lasts all day on my skin. I don't know about nobody else, but I get great longevity on this fragrance. Compliment rating and compliment factor. This isn't one that's going to be highly complimented, and people are just going to stop doing what they're doing to talk to you. But I have received slight compliments when worn right. I think when I was out, I had like a peak, a wool pea coat on, or turtleneck, a scarf. I had a scully on, some brunch boots, black jeans. You know, I was dressed casual. 
So dressing in the right environment, going to like a cigar lounge, a whiskey bar, a speakeasy in the wintertime, I think that suits this perfectly. Type of person is for anybody who likes ambers. If you so-called are amber head, you have to get your nose on it. How many sprays I normally wear on this? It depends on where I'm going. If I'm going to a cigar lounge and I'm fighting through the, the cigar smoke and everything, I might go eight sprays on this. I might. Six to eight sprays. If I'm going to be somewhere like in the movies, somewhere really close and intimate, I might only do two sprays. And again, this is a top five amber, probably number three to four, depending on where I want to put Tom Ford's discontinued amber absolute. And that's Ombre Aria from Perfuma Roma. Go ahead. That was, that was also set up on my <laughs> table here, too. Great minds think alike. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good one for sure. Um, yeah, I, I mean, that brand is uh, kind of underhyped. Uh, and uh, also, some people don't understand how to wear those because all their fragrances are kind of linear. There's no top, heart, and base notes. Mm. And uh, the brand also promotes, you know, rubbing them because they're kind of oily. But really great fragrances from that house. Great gourmands. And uh, their patchouli is even good, too. I just don't own it. I, I, I have it. I was uh -huh. going to play it. I was uh -huh. going to play it. I have it uh -huh. right here. I was going to play it. It is basically Ombre Aria with a little bit of woody patchouli. Um, yeah. What a fact. Um, the patchouli is not damp like patchouli imperial. It's more like, it's almost cakey. It's almost yeah, it cakey, cakey. And, and slightly yeah. green. And slightly yeah. green. Yeah, yeah. I love that patchouli. Yeah, it's a good house. Good house for sure. All right. We're Bar at number seven, tobacco. Another top five note for me. Mm. So this is a new discovery. I haven't spoken about it on the channel whatsoever. I think I will do a video on it. It's an old house uh, from the 1800s, maybe the early 1900s that has is launching newer fragrances now that it's own, uh, under a new ownership. And this is probably their fourth tobacco fragrance. They're known for Tabac Blonde. From the house of Caron, this is Tabac Exqui. Mm. Exqui. Do you guys know this one? Oh, man, it is so freaking amazing. I absolutely love it. So there are some reminders a little bit of tobacco vanille. And there's also a little reminder of uh, uh, tobacco, tobacco uh, the Les Indomitables fragrance, uh, which I'm forgetting the name of. But this is a little more gourmand and a lot more ambery and spicy as well. It has loads of tobacco with cacao and also dark chocolate. There's definitely spicy cinnamon touch in here. kind of gives you a holiday vibe, holiday spice vibe. Then, of course, lots of amber with the benzoin and labdanum. And then it does get a bit smoky with uh, like myrrh, but it's a sweet resin. Uh, and then, of course, uh, in order to make the fragrance prolong longer, they've added ambroxan in here as well. But man, it is so, so good. I've been wanting to review all of their tobaccos. This is, um, like I said, there's four now here, but they're known for Tabac Blonde, which is a much older fragrance, uh, which is also quite good. But this, I think anybody into tobacco must, must get their nose on this one because it is super fantastic. It smells amazing. And if you love tobacco, because there's that ashy tobacco, uh, you know, experience here when you're wearing it. So occasion to wear it. Uh, I'd say any time of the year. It's not an uber beastly fragrance, but it is pretty strong with all the notes in here. So maybe leave it for uh, autumn uh, and winter, maybe spring as well. But I've been wearing it. San Francisco summers are 60 degrees. So I've been wearing it now and I'm just enjoying the heck out of it. Projection and longevity, very moderate, uh, definitely more than designer, but it's not uber beast mode. Have not received any compliments yet. Um, if you, I guess the age range for this, if you like tobacco, vanille, whatever age you are, then you're going to probably enjoy this because I think it kind of falls into uh, that category. And for me, I'd go with like 10 sprays for this one. So anyway, this is, uh, I'm having a bit of a difficulty here with my camera, but this is Tabak Exqui uh, from uh, Caron. Anybody know this house? I never heard of the house, and this is why I'm glad I have you on. <laughs> <laughs> that that sound, and it was um Vanille Havan from Les Indomitables. Yes, yeah. and that's one of my favorite uh tobaccos and um boozy fragrances. It 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 is up there. I, I love that fragrance. 
and I love it a lot. Um, mm-hmm. I remember when I first got it and it started selling out. Once I started talking about it, oh, yeah. I, you know, I made made the chatter go. Um, great fragrance. Um, we're gonna have to talk about that because I need to right. know about that house. Um, so okay, so here we go. We're gonna get into my tobacco fragrance. This fragrance is a tobacco made for a classy gentleman. This is a year around tobacco scent. To me, for any man, especially if you're 30 and up, you should own this fragrance. I must call it like it is. You should own it. This is a tobacco fragrance that can be worn by multiple, just anywhere, anytime, signature scent worthy. This is from Ormond Jane. This is Mont Tobacco Intensivo. What are we talking about? This is fresh. To me, Verano was good. I own it. I like it. But Intensivo is where it's at. (laughs) It is where it's at. They have this accord called the Mountain Air. It's almost like a cooling Minty, I feel like it's coming from the cardamom. It's like this cooling essence that flows over the top of the fragrance. Some clary sage, you get on, so you get that, that jasmine-like molecule that also comes off like a pheromone that's just very attractive. There's some powderiness, I believe some violet may be in here, but you have that orange up top with the cardamom, the juniper, That mountain air cord, just fresh tobacco. This smells like a person who drives a Mercedes, owns an AP, and just he's a likable guy that has his business together. This this is one I, I would say, if you're 30 and up, you should at least have a 50 ml of this. It is that freaking good. I don't care when, signature scent worthy. I don't care what you're doing, where you're going, drinking, smoking hookah, on on a boat, um, in linen outfit, in a suit, in a tux, going to a wedding, getting married, guest wedding, bar mitzvah. I don't care what you're doing. (laughs) This just works. This is absolutely amazing. Projection and longevity, I think it's more of a scent trail kind of fragrance than it is an overall um, push out. It's going to like, as you pass people, you're going to leave that beautiful scent trail. People within your area will smell you. I'm not much of an oversprayer. I just like to give people enough, but not too much. That's mostly how I like to wear my fragrance, depending on environment and where I'm going. This is work safe from the job to the bar. You can wear this fragrance. Compliment rating, compliment factor. Bro, it's up there. It's up there. You're One, you're going to smell different. You're going to smell like somebody. You're going to smell like most people don't live where they can drive to a Macy's and a Neiman's. And even then, all those stores don't carry um, Ormond Jane. They don't. So when you wear something like this, nine times out of ten, nobody smells anything like this when you're around them. That's a win for you. Fresh, clean tobacco. Type of person is for. I already told you, if you're 30 and up, you need to do this. How many sprays? Let's say, let's go about eight. Let's go eight. Summertime, let's go eight. Let's go with the gusto. You're going to be out and about, do about eight or 10. Out and about. Like you're going to be getting in the car. You're going to be moving around. You're going shopping. You're going to hit the mall. And then you might hit the outlet. Then you might be by the water getting you something to eat. Yeah, let's go 10 sprays. Why not? This is Mont Tobac Intensivo. This is a must. This is a must for me. A must have. Everybody should have it. Good house. Yes, very good house. Some of the classiest fragrances. They're very wearable. Yeah, it, it's not a like smoky tobacco. I just think it's it's just easy to wear. And like you said, it is it smells of class and sophistication. Yeah. Very Absolutely rich. We're going with number six, and we should be at leathers. Leather. So leathers are some of the strongest fragrances you can wear. And I look at density of notes, like the note leather is a very dense note. So typically you're going to wear less sprays of leather and probably wear the leather fragrances when it's colder outside. Again, I don't have any rules. 
And I'm going to go with something that I haven't spoken about for a while. I was going through my fragrances and I've rediscovered it. And I've got a tiny bit left. This is a very classic leather fragrance that I absolutely love. It is so luxurious. I'm talking about Kanize 10 Golden Edition. How do you guys know? Do you guys know this one? Man, this is a, it's not really easy to get. I, I think Lucky Scent sells this brand and they have probably the original, which is from the 1920s. And this version here is from like 2000 or 2001. So it's still fairly um, new, but but older. But it is very rich, supple, kind of a um, suede leather like leather. But when I put my nose on this, it just transports me back to like when the leather industry was booming. I don't know where, what country or whatever. But there's something transportive about this one. And it reminds me of uh, the leather industry, but not when it's all, you know, killing of the animals and, you know, tanning and all that kind of stuff. Afterwards, when the leather is all finished and, you know, it's starting to uh, be acquired by the people that consume the leather products and things like that. So it's that kind of leather, like leather, like it's very luxurious. So it's leather with castorium and then there's carnation here, which is a note that's rarely used in fragrances. It does have a bit of a clove-like smell. Of course, they're using oak moss back in the days. There's lots of amber here. There's vanilla. There's musk, sandalwood, and some citruses and powdery notes like iris. But it's, man, it's super fantastic. I need to get another bottle and uh, really dig into this one. It might remind you a little bit of Queer Canage from Dior or Queer Fetiche from Maitre Parfum et Gantier. Even if you've ever smelled Royal English Leather by Creed, the vaulted fragrance, which is one of my all-time favorite Creed fragrances. Uh, this is going to remind you of that, but this is super phenomenal. Um, occasion to wear it, as I was saying, winter, colder days, or tiny sprays throughout the whole year. Occasion to wear, I would say this is formal. Don't overspray it, though, if you're doing it formal. Uh, it's very classy to me. Um, the longevity is super strong. It's not uber intense, but this has great longevity. And we're speaking of leather once again. So leathers are pretty dense notes. So you don't have to spray a lot of sprays. Compliments. I never receive compliments with wearing leather. I never do. And it's a very mature fragrance for me. Uh, very right. mature because it's very classic. But either way, my leather fragrance tonight is... Uh, Kinesia 10 Golden Edition. And as you can see, it says toilet water on it. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows this house. Let me know. But uh, I love that stuff. Mm. <laughs> Always coming with something that nobody heard of. <laughs> we like that. That's why, that's, why we, that's why we enjoy your content. Let me see what the crowds, because we're about to go into halftime. Before I do my leather, let's see what we had a super chat. Um, would you mind... Touching how Yuzu grapefruit different scent profiles. Um, that's for another video for another time. Unfortunately, my friend, um, we're talking about this verse since, but we'll get into that. But oh no, while we're here, let's ask the guest. Um, because he did pay for a super super chat. Um, would you mind touching on how Yuzu grapefruit um differ in scent profile? For me, in the end, I think they're pretty similar, but I think Yuzu has a saltiness that the grapefruit doesn't have. That's my the, the experience differences. So typically when they use yuzu, they kind of go into the marine direction in fragrances, I think, because it has that naturally uh, saltiness uh, to the, the, the smell of yuzu. That's, that's what, I, what I've read and heard. I haven't really compared them side by side, but I think that uh, might be the difference between the two. I find grapefruit to be a lot tart, bitter, and zingier. It has a, a natural spice to it. And I think uh, because of the saltiness of the yuzu, it might not as be as spicy and zingy. Yeah, I, I would pretty much concur with the same with the same All thing. Right. So let's go into my number six before we go into halftime, and we're going to talk about leather. Okay, so with this fragrance, and this, I was going to go different ways. Most of y'all who've watched me for a while, you already know what my favorite leather fragrance is. So I've talked about that on a number of verse since, so I'm not going to talk about that. And since I was going to go with another house for my number five, I'm going to talk about a newer acquisition of mine that was just released yesterday, I believe, from the House of Electimus. 
And that's going to be Aquila Absolute. Now, with this fragrance, this has elements of a lot of different things. Forget the notes. What I get here, there's some raspberry, some rose, some white oud, leather. It's going to be a whole bunch of notes. Forget all, forget all that. What you get here is a very smoky experience. I get that right off the jump. I get like the burning coals of Bacor. You can almost smell it right before you put some oud down or if you're going to burn some sandalwood. I feel like I can smell almost smoky. It's almost birchy, but not quite. Smooth, supple, leather. This is from Julian Raskinet. It had it's almost very Middle Eastern expired. You have cardamom up there. Now, cardamom can be used in different ways. I find smelling different types of cardamom that sometimes it can come off green and minty, spicy. You got cardamom where it can almost be watery, zingy. I feel like an apple brandy on the rocks. I get from Killian, I get something watery in um African leather. I get something very spiced. With this one. This is almost fresh cardamom, almost like if you was going to do Turkish coffee, the cardamom you would use in that. So you're smelling this fresh spice. You got rose, and I believe uh, it might be a rose absolute in there, but there's almost this bright, almost citric rose. So when you first smell it because of the smoke, you think you're going to get something that's very dark, and it has darkness to it. Till you put it beside dark leathers, that I own, and you say, oh, there's a brightness to it. But smelling it on its own, there's this rich, smoky darkness to it. Very ambery, very woody. Some ouds in here as well. This is a beautiful fragrance. I had a sample of this, as I said, another video months and months, probably like a month ago. And the first time I smoked the sample, I called back to the representative, and this was sent to me and told him how great of a fragrance this absolutely is. This is a love at first sniff for me. This isn't one that's going to always get you compliments. Sebastian said, all leathers don't get you compliments unless you're wearing <laughs> Cure Majesty. <laughs> but all leathers don't get you compliments. This is a fun leather. This is a smoky leather, a Middle Eastern style leather. So where would I wear this? I would wear this like to a shisha bar. I would wear this to a cigar lounge. I would wear this um winter. Um, Late fall, cooler weather. I wear this to the bar, depending on where I would wear this to a date, like going to wearing a leather jacket, turtleneck in the winter time. You got a scarf. I would pop something like this on summertime. Uh, I couldn't reach for this unless, again, I was going to a cigar lounge. Then I might put three or four sprays of this on. Um, type of person is for you gotta like this is gonna probably be 35 and up. And you're going to have to have a little bit of experience with leather fragrances. All the other fragrances don't smell like ombre leather. Um, compliment rating and compliment factor, I don't think it's going to be that high. I haven't received one for it, so I just don't think it's going to be that type of fragrance. I just think we'll see what it does in the winter. But for right now, I'm going to say the compliment rating is pretty low on this because it is a leather fragrance, and all leather fragrances just don't get the compliments. Certain ones absolutely do. Um, type of person is for and how many sprays I normally go about um, four sprays is how I've been testing this but I've been very careful because this isn't the season I want to wear this in so I'm going to bypass that and that's again from the house of Electimus and this is Aquila Absolute this is their new release from the house from Julian Raskine I actually like that one I love this and you're one. right it's it's very Middle Eastern yeah you, you would almost think like, yeah, it it reminds me of, it, it is extremely Middle East. You have to like Middle Eastern style of fragrances and that spice. Do you, yeah. I know you had a lot of um Turkish or Middle Eastern coffee. Does that cardamom kind of re resemble that for you? Are you reminded of that when you smelled it? A little bit, a little bit. Mm. Totally, but it is there. The cardamom is really there. There's a soapy factor about cardamom. And I started noticing it lately. I didn't notice it that much before until I really studied it. Mm. And so right now, when I drink coffee with cardamom in it, I'm thinking I have soap in my coffee. Oh, really? But, but I haven't, I I haven't it, found that yet. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to still. I'm still trying to train my nose <laughs> and educate myself. But I haven't found that element in um, my cardamom yet. But it is cardamom is such a complex note, just like ooh, 
It mm-hmm. depending on where it's from and where it's grown, it just has a different layer. So absolutely, we're, we're switching to halftime, and I start going first, and you go second, and we're going into the note of Rose. Ooh, okay. So <laughs> Rose is one of Sebastian. I did these notes particularly because I've watched Sebastian for years, and I know what some of his favorite notes are, and I know what mine are. We have similar tastes when it comes to that. Well, I could go different directions. But since I'm going first and I'm a little scared, I don't like to get blown out of the water. I don't like to lose. So I had to go with a surefire, bona fide win for me. And this is an expensive rose. This is an expensive fragrance. Um, I'm not telling you you have to go out and get it. Y'all already, most people who watch me, you already know what my favorite rose is. Um, and my favorite type of rose is Taif rose, which is a Middle Eastern rose. I get something very bright, lemony, citric, very fresh, almost tea-like. This is coming from the House of Spirit of Dubai, and this is Nargisi, the king of roses, in my opinion. Now, this is more than a rose fragrance. This has tons of notes, <laughs> tons, almost too many. Look at the spray on this. Just, just, oh my goodness. This is transportive. I find the house to be transportive and you must be in the Middle Eastern style fragrances. You have May Rose in here. You have Taif Rose in here. You have Bulgarian Rose in here. You have literally every rose (laughs) in perfumery in this one fragrance. But May Rose dominates it up front. And then you get that Turkish coffee. So it almost goes into gourmand and you get fruity notes and you get coffee and cardamom in the background. You are transported to a Middle Eastern royal house in Dubai. And you can just smell the rose. You can smell the wealth (laughs) in this. You can smell it. Like, I feel like I'm going to a friend's backyard and they have a white Bengal tiger in the backyard. This is exotic. This is alluring. This is special. When you wear something like this, it is complex. If you look at the notes, take your time. Look at the notes. It's too many. (laughs) It's too much going on. But there's certain things you're going to smell. It's oud in here. Rose, all the roses in here. So every element, you get something like Bulgarian, a little jammy and warm. But then you get that May Rose, Citric, and then you get Taif, which is almost tea, slightly honey feel to it. Oh, the spice. Some leather. Because you have civet now. Some of y'all going to see animalistic notes in there. Just think of that supporting this rich leather cord. Just Think of that. I believe patchouli's in here as well. Well, everything's in here. (laughs) Like 50 notes in here. This is a wonderful fragrance. It is constantly changing. I've never smelt a rose fragrance that when I wear it, depending on where I wear it, how I wear it, and throughout the life of it, I get different elements. I will get the base and I'll start get this leather rose. Ooh, then all of a sudden the opening of the cardamom coffee will come back. Spirit of Dubai is one of my favorite houses because it is extremely complex and forever changing. Occasions, this is special. If you're going somewhere to a wedding or you're getting married or you're going on a really significant date and you really want to make an impression and you want to wear rose, to me, this is the king of rose. Um, Projection and longevity, this lasts on my skin all day. Room filler, Eh, I don't know many rose fragrances pure rose fragrances that are room fillers, but they leave beautiful scent trails. Um, Compliment rating and compliment factor, I find to be extremely high for me. I've received tons of compliments on this fragrance. Type of person is for, because the bottle is so doggone expensive, you're going to have to have a little bit of ducats in your pocket. This is like a thousand dollar bottle. So um, we're going to say 35 and up. You're going to have to spend. But places like Max Aroma, sometimes you can find it with coupons. You might find it seven, six. Give a, give a take. You might find it on Joma Shop. Hit the link in the bio if you go in there. But they used to carry this brand. Um, But you have to search around. Um, And how many sprays? 
I normally go seven to eight sprays on this. This this is royal. If I'm coming to your wedding, I'm probably wearing this. But then again, I don't know if I want to stun on you like that. Again, this is from the spirit of Dubai, and this is Nargisi. Dude, yeah. when you said Taif Rose, I thought shit. Oops, excuse my language. Yeah. I, thought, no, I okay. thought you were I thought you were picking the fragrance I was gonna talk about, but it's I know what you're gonna amazing. choose. I love the fragrance you're gonna choose. So let's just get into it. Great minds think alike. Go uh, this it. is this is Paris Monte Carlo's Rose de Taif right here. Man, this stuff actually it's so strong and potent and oily, and it actually wears best in the heat because this stuff lingers on when it's hot outside. And I have friends that wear this stuff. I can't stop smelling it off of them because they smell so amazing wearing it. And for me, it's definitely a compliment getter when I wear it as well. It's all about rose. This is a rose bomb and it's a jammy, oily rose, as I said. And it's highlighting the Taif rose from Saudi Arabia, which has a lemony undertone. But in addition to the Taif rose, they've got May rose and they've got Damask rose here, along with geranium, which also has rosiness there so it's a rose bomb for sure it's major loads of rose uh, and if you're a lover of rose fragrances and nothing but rose this is definitely something you have to have in your collection now they have the original version of this as well in edp i much prefer the extract because it is much denser and oilier and you can really feel and experience the oiliness of the jamminess of the the rose in here there's cloves there's lemons for sure there's a brightness about it and then there's some ambery touches under there as well. Man, it smells really, really great. Like um, I'm from the Middle East and I've had rose as a delicacy. We've had rose jam. We've had rose water to drink uh, like a, uh, you know, drink in a hot day with ice, you know, like a rose water kind of a thing. And this reminds me of that uh, experience of eating the roses, but this time we're, we're wearing it. So it's uber rosy. Uh, and that's absolutely fantastic. This house doesn't get a lot of love, but this is their best fragrance. Um, so I think this is uh, occasion to wear it. I'm looking at the notes of what I'm supposed to talk about. Occasion to wear it. Like I said, I wear it in the summertime because it smells best in the heat because the heat really amplifies it. And uh, I really, really love it in the heat. You can wear it in the winter time as well, but I think it shines in the heat more. Uh, and then because of the heat, the projection and longevity are much better when it's warm outside compared to when it's cold outside. Of course, when it's cold outside, but you're moving around and your body temp rises, you are going to experience some projection. And of course, I get compliments with this. I absolutely, I mean, people love it on me and people enjoy the rosiness of this one. But generally, compliments are from women. And it might come off a bit mature. It is rose after all. And sometimes when men smell rose fragrances, they think it's grandma. So it might have that kind of a, an effect or a reaction with the men. But man, this is one of the best rose fragrances. Absolutely love it. So this is Rose de Taif. Uh, and it's from Paris Monte Carlo. And this is the X-ray version. Uh, it's quite pricey, but I think you can find some deals out there uh, if you're ever looking uh, to buy this one. So anyway, love this stuff. You know this one. Absolutely. That is <laughs> that it, it, there are some great roses, but I think you're what's your opinion? If you can only pick one type of rose, because you got Bulgarian, you got Turkish, Damas, Taif, Rose Absolute. What is your favorite rose? For me, it's Taif. I don't think nothing beats Taif. Maybe May might be a close second. What's your opinion? Um I think the type of roses we used to eat um are Damask roses. Mm. So I'm familiar with the way that is used in delicacy. Mm. Um, but I think roses are beautiful. I mean, just recently I was mentioning I'm kind of bored of rose. But when I took this out for this uh, live, I thought, oh, my God, I'm not bored of rose. This stuff is freaking amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and rose can be worn any anywhere, any season. And if you're dressed right, <laughs> you know, where it matches kind of the aesthetic that you're putting together. It, it the compliments pour in, and I think the age of this whole uh, is grandma rose. I haven't smelled the rose like that in a long time, where something was like it smells kind of cheap, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so we're going into number four, and we're going okay. into boozy fragrances. Boozy, boozy. 
boozy. Okay, so I haven't reached into one of my favorite houses from one of my favorite perfumers. And as I look on this list, I don't think I'm going to mention this house at all. Now that I'm looking, good gracious. Okay, this fragrance, I haven't talked about this fragrance a lot. I've talked about it a, a number of occasions, but this is powerful. This comes from a house that makes powerful fragrances. If you put this on, this will fill a room. I sprayed it to remind myself of it. And this whole area smells of it. There's a elegance to it and a naughtiness to it. This is almost like a naughty woman. But there's masculine edges in this that makes this super fun and delicious. This is coming from Amwaj, and this is Overture Woman. To me, far better than the men's. <laughs> By doubt. But this is for a night out. Do not wear this fragrance to work. The occasions, not for work. This is date night. This is going out. This is going to the bar. This is going clubbing. If you wear this, you will smell like somebody took a hundred year brandy, apple brandy that was soaked in a cherry oak cask that had wine in there. So you're mixing the brandy that was inside a cask that stored wine. When you smell it, it's like popping a cork of a beautiful wine bottle, vintage, 100 years. This has some May Rose in there, very citric, incense, leather. The leather is supported by the leather cord, but there's also this spicy saffron, leathery nuance that adds a little oomph to it, that gives it a little bite. You ever had a really good wine and you sip it? And it has a little bite to it, a little woodiness. This is it. This is elegant. So when would you wear this? You're going to a gala. I'm talking about where drinks are going to be poured. Music is going to be played. What are we talking about? <laughs> Compliments? Hell yes. <laughs> How many sprays? Two. This is up there with my prestige. Too many sprays is your, the problem with too many sprays with this fragrance is you will smell like you poured liquor, like you were sloppy and you just poured liquor on yourself. This is booze galore. This is delicious. This is premium booze, not bottom shelf. This smells like top shelf age <laughs> booze in leather. I don't, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> you don't need much. Sexy is hell. Scent trail, long. Room filler, if I, I sprayed this in a room, I'm going to leave the room after this verse ends. If I come back an hour and a half later, I'm going to smell this in the air. Trust me, don't overspray this. Please, for the love of God, don't do it. You will dominate everything and anything around you. Um, type of person is for um, somebody who's legal to drink, <laughs> but there's an elegance to it. I would say 30. I would start going like 27, 30 and up. And how many sprays again, a gala. Let's say I'm going to a fragrance event. Let's say I'm going to Scent Explore, some fragrance event, maybe Essence where I know people wearing fragrances. Um, I might do six sprays. Why? Cause I'm a maniac. And I want to dominate the room because there's too many other things going on. But if I'm going to a gala, maybe about four, maybe five sprays. I still want to keep it sexy. If you're going like to a dinner, oh, you don't need no more than two. Trust me, you're going to let everybody else at the dinner table will end up smelling you. So maybe one and a half sprays if you want to be gentle. Trust me, the woman or man across from you will smell you the entire night. The entire night. And that's from the house of Amwaj, and that's Overture Woman. So you have no problem wearing that fragrance? I 
love that fragrance. I think most women will say it's too masculine. And I think okay. it's because of the leather. This is <laughs> this the one. I love Overture Man. I truly do. I love it. It's that woodiness, that old cognac man sitting in the leather couch, you mm -hmm. know, in the good old boys gentleman club. But this right here, <laughs> you can dress this up. That's why mm -hmm. I, you can dress this up in a tux, in a suit, or wear it casual. Man or woman, I think is going to absolutely work. There's masculine and feminine touches within this fragrance. I think it's unisex right down the middle. I, I find a portrayal woman to be unisex. It's tobacco and jasmine, which mm. smells super amazing on me. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, a lot of their women like fragrances are like that, right? Yeah, I think, I think yeah. kind of gender bending. All right, you're at number four, your boozy fragrance. What do you have for the people? So I'm not going to go with a traditionally boozy fragrance, but it's boozy to me. And uh, it has boozy notes, but they are not the traditional boozy notes like rum or cognac or whiskey or something like that. Uh, it features vodka and champagne, but I feel like there is something like cognac in here or maybe whiskey. But we're going with an amber fragrance, going to the house of Parfum de Empire, and it is Ombre Russe, this one right here. Uh, this has been in my collection since 2013. I started shooting videos in 2012, um, and in 2013, I bought amber, Ombre Russe because I, I was obsessed with am ambers. Right now, I have a 500 ml bottle in addition to this one of Ambre Russe. They no longer make 500 ml bottles of Ambre Russe. Um, but this is an amber fragrance in the end. It's inspired by it's Russian amber, basically. And it does have the champagne and vodka note. But for me, I feel like there's also whiskey or cognac in here because it's got that kind of boozy warmth in there. But it's in addition to those notes. We've got incense. So there's a bit of smokiness here. Uh, we've got cinnamon, so it's got a holiday vibe. I love cinnamon in fragrances. There's definitely a warmth about cinnamon, and it instantly transports me to the holidays. And this feels like the holidays because it's warm and spicy and also boozy at the same time uh, to give you that kind of a happy spirit uh, kind of a, a wear. Uh, and then there's leather here a little bit and tea and musk and some aromatic spices as well. It's super fantastic. I think this fragrance is not as strong as it once used to be personally. So maybe that's why I don't talk about it too much. My 500 ml bottle is the original formulation. This version seems a little subdued on me, but as a smell, it's super amazing uh, occasion to wear it. I think it's a very festive fragrance, holidays. Also, if you just want to wear a boozy amber fragrance any time of the year, I don't think this is super potent that it's going to totally uh, kill you in the summertime when it's warm outside. Projection and uh, uh, longevity are kind of moderate for me. Compliments, uh, I haven't been wearing it too much lately. Uh, in the past, I used to occasional compliments here and there, not all the time. Type of person, um, I think if you like fragrances like Bentley for Men Intense, you might like this one, actually. So um, I guess 30 and up, uh, 25, 30 and up. I, I wear about 15 sprays of this in this version. So this is Ombre Russe from Parfum de Empire. One of my favorite underrated uh, French houses, uh, Marc Antoine Corticchiato does some great fragrances. He's the perfumer behind all of the fragrances for this house and uh, highly recommend Ombre Russe. Yes. Oh, <laughs> it, it, it is a legend. Top to me, definitely top 10 Amber, and it might be top five for me. Okay. When, when I really Good look to at know. It, top 10, th this has a element of elegance to it. Yeah. You know, it, it's rich, it's pretty. It almost is like if Chanel had made it almost like it, it, it's just very. Refined. I think it's how I would how I would do it with a sexiness to it. It's like a woman being very erotic, but yet classy at the same time, using a flip of her hair or the cut of her eye. That feel you get when you smell this. That's what I get. This is stunning. Mm -hmm. Stunning, cool, stunning cool. amber. Stunning cool. amber. Cool. Okay. Cool, cool. We're we're at great minds again. Think alike. Um <laughs> We're at number three, and we're going to be going into Gourmand Fragrances. Let me get my thing right there. Okay, so 
this was a tough one because I don't know. I've been wearing a lot of gourmands in the last two years. <laughs> so I had to dig rich and was like, okay, what have I worn more of? What, what is when I decide to go back to wearing gourmands, what is something that I'm going to wear that's just not going to have me smelling like a cookie per se? So I looked around on my shelf and I found a fragrance that I think is absolutely sexy. This is a chocolate fragrance. Chocolate with some booze, some cinnamon, the romance of rose and vanilla. This, unfortunately, is a discontinued fragrance. Hopefully, the House of Guerlain brings it back. And this is Gourmand Conquin. Listen, this is one that becomes part of you when you wear it. It's it's not one that's going to like fill a room because I had a, a gourmand that if you put five sprays that will take over a whole room and have it smelling like peanut butter, Reese's peanut butter cups. <laughs> this is one that is very elegant. It's like you can wear it when you want to smell like delicious, but you don't want to smell like you poured chocolate all over yourself. <laughs> There's a softness to it. This is one that's going to leave a sexy scent trail. You're going out to a bar, a lounge, and you're wearing this, or you're going on a date. This is a perfect Valentine's Day date night fragrance. It's elegant. It's chocolate, but not too rich. Almost like chocolate powder. And it flows in contrast with a beautiful rose. This is chocolate and rose at its finest. With the dried fruits of rum, the sweetness, this almost watery, boozy, like chocolate liqueur. I don't know why they discontinued it. I don't know why. But this is one of the best chocolate fragrances ever created, in my opinion. Now, if you're looking for a beast mode fragrance, this isn't going to be for you. Occasions, date night. Or fall and winter, you're going to a bar, you can pull this off and not smell like cookies. <laughs> so I like this. I think this is very versatile because of the way the chocolate sits on skin. Projection and longevity. This is more of a scent trail. This is one that people need to be within arm's reach to really smell you. But that's kind of what you want. You want to draw people in when wearing this. Compliment rating and compliment factors are 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10. All for your skin is just as long as people or you're comfortable with wearing gourmand fragrances. I, I find this to be highly complimented. Absolutely. I love this. It's unisex right down the middle. Middle. I love to smell it on myself as well as on a woman. Um, type of person is for anybody who loves gourmands, um, which is self-explanatory. And how many sprays? Um, let's go about eight. Start at eight and kind of move yourself up and down because, again, it's not a beast mode fragrance. If you're going to be on a date, like Valentine's Day, I think last time I wore this, I put eight sprays on. I put eight sprays, and it still didn't overpower the space. But if you want to get a little bit more, you might have to go in like the 12, the 15. But if you're going to do that many sprays, I would just tell you to go with Symposium <laughs> from George Off. <laughs> you know, something that's a little bit more stronger chocolate, but this is one that's elegant. This is one to draw people in where they get wafts and they want to come in. Again, this is number three in the Gourmand list, and this is Gourmand Conquin from the House of Guerlain. That is absolutely one of the most delicious fragrances. It's a bummer Guerlain discontinued it. Yes, yes, it, it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I I'm scared to almost use that. I don't, <laughs> but I don't I even have that I, much in my bottle. It's down yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, it 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 is an amazing fragrance. It's one of those romance to me. It screams romance to me. Screams yeah. romance. Absolutely. So your gourmands is up. Oh yeah, perfect for Valentine's Day. Perfect. Yeah. All right, you're up. Gourmand. Okay, gourmands. Uh, one of my favorite genres, but I'm not going to go with an uber gourmand today. I'm going to go with something that I really love from a house that is uh, fruity gourmand, amber, vanilla. Uh, going to uh, the house of uh, Atelier d'Azor, this is Rouge Sare. I speak a lot about this one, and what I like about it is it does remind me of a Middle Eastern uh, dessert. Uh, Middle Eastern desserts don't tend to be very sweet they can be but not all the time and they can be fruity as well and that's what i like about this one it's kind of like a compote experience 
with some uh, kind of dough uh, that's cooked. Uh, imagine in a bowl with uh, these fruits that are cooked or baked. Uh, they're kind of chopped up and you're drizzling it with honey or some kind of a molasses or syrup on it. And then you eat it kind of warm, maybe even put some ice cream on it. And that's what uh, Rue Sare reminds me of. And it features lots of dates. So it's Middle Eastern for sure. And I grew up with dates. I absolutely love dates. I could eat them all the time. And it also has plums in it. So there's that fruitiness, but it's not uber fruity. These are fruits that don't have a very fruitiness about them. We've got the vanilla. We've got guyac wood. We've got Peru balsam, heliotrope, which makes the fragrance very powdery, a bit almondy. And then you got cinnamon in here. Once again, I'm a fan of cinnamon. Uh, it gives you that uh, holiday vibe. Uh, style as well uh absolutely love this one uh i love it enough that i featured it in scent club uh here uh with my scent club and uh i'm hoping that they're going to make an x-ray version of this because they already have three x-rays of three of their fragrances but the, this rouge sare has become my favorite from this house because it is gourmand at, after all ambery balsamic fruity spicy gourmand but it's not an overdose of gourmand so occasion to wear it I think this is not strong enough, like not uber intense that you can wear it all year round. But of course, in the heat, it's probably going to get cloying. So uh, manage your sprays with this one. Again, it's not uber intense. So projection and uh, longevity are moderate for this one. I haven't I haven't gotten compliments with this one. So uh, I'm not sure about compliments, uh, but uh, maybe here and there once in a while. And then with the type of age, uh, I guess uh, mature, uh, although... This might appeal to younger people that are used to designer fragrances that are all typically very sweet. Um, it's kind of got that kind of a sweetness for it. So anyway, Rouge Sare, such a great fragrance from uh, Atelier d'Azor. Uh, absolutely one of my favorites, my number one favorite from this house. Mm, heavy hitter. Have y'all tried that fragrance? It is a great fragrance house. We have 337 people in the chat. Hey, everyone. Please, please hit the like button. And we're on an hour and 20 minutes. That is a lot of people that are hanging out with us. So we appreciate it with you. And we're going into number two. So we'll be wrapping it up here shortly. Absolutely stunning. So we're going to go into one of my, I've been, you're, I think you're like me or I'm like you where we're like each other. <laughs> yes. Well, every year is like we find this certain notes or feels and we just go on a kick. Like for me this year, it's been musk. I don't Ooh. know what it is, but I've been falling in love with musk. So for my number two musk, let me get to it. This fragrance comes from a house that has been known for romance. This is a fragrance that will have you feeling aldehydic is floral musky with creamy sandalwood this is a very middle eastern style of musk and this is a middle eastern exclusive from the house of killian this is musk butterfly now if you're familiar with the house of killian they don't have a lot of fragrances or at least some of their newer fragrances or new newer formulates, however you want to look at it, that are just going to be room fillers and beastly. I almost went with an attar from um, Arabian Oud called uh, Musk Arus. And that's Middle Eastern. That is musk and roses. With this, I believe you get Turkish, some Damask. It's out of Hittic. So it's slightly fresh and citrus. The white musk is very fluffy. So it's very cloudy, very soft very sensual and you get some sandalwood in here and so i believe some valid in here which also makes it powdery this is like setting it on a cloud this is what heaven feels like <laughs> it's clean it is soft it is fluffy this is like going on vacation you know when you go on vacation you already took your pto and you you know i hope you're staying in a five or four star hotel and you flop on the bed after you've been traveling for hours and you just flop on the bed and the, and the comforter is very soft and fluffy and white. And it's like it covers your body when you lay in. That's the feeling I get when I wear this. Because it's not really dense, it's great for hot weather. I mean, when you have that hot weather where you don't want something sticky, 
but you want to be fresh, almost linen clean is how I would also describe it. That's what musk butterfly is. I love this fragrance. It is extremely, I've smelled fragrances like this. It's not very unique. I'm gonna be honest. I smell like attars that smell like this. Very Middle Eastern musk, rose and white musk. It's a lot of fragrances like this, but this is the spray version that I absolutely love. I love this fragrance. Um, You have to get it from a Killian Boutique if you want to pick it up or from a Killian Rep. Um, I've talked about that before. Uh, occasions, hot weather, summertime, you're going to be out and about the heat. Let it just do what it does. Musk men, don't be afraid of floral musk. Please don't be afraid of it. Projection and longevity. Killian is not a beast mode kind of fragrance. It's going to leave more of a scent trail than a room filler. So don't think of it as something that's going to fill up a room. Compliment rating and compliment factor. I have received compliments wearing it's like, ooh, you smell good. If you're dressed up, linen outfit, think of all white party in the Hamptons wearing linen. This is what I would wear. Type of person is for anybody who likes musk. As long as you're comfortable with musk. Some men aren't really comfortable with musk. They think it leans feminine. That's okay. That's your opinion. But I think anybody who likes musk, um, you should definitely give it a try. How many sprays with this? I'm going 10 sprays. Because <laughs> it's not a beast mode phrase. I go 10 sprays with this. In longevity, I'm getting every bit about seven to eight hours on this. Sometimes like six, seven hours. I'm going to wear this in a dead heat of summer. When it's humid in 90, I'll report back. I love this stuff. And this is coming from the house of Killian. And this is Musk Butterfly, their Middle Eastern exclusive. Don't know that one. Yeah, this is this is a good one. But I've again, it's not very unique. Um, I think fragrances like Musk Shamal might be kind of close. Like you start getting into that where, you know, floral, rosy, aldehydic, fluffy, white musk. I mean, there's so similarities. Yeah, it's very clean. Just okay. you, you cannot go wrong with with that. You can wear that to work. You can wear that to a wedding. You can wear that formally. I love that kind of musk. Cool. So what you got for us on your musk? So um, I'm going with something that I've spoken quite a bit about on the channel. It's from a very small indie niche house from France. Um, I'm always after the true authentic deer musk smell because when I was growing up, I used to, you know, hang around with a lot of relatives who wore perfume. And I remember smelling the real authentic deer musk oils that these ladies used to wear. And that's left a major impression on me wanting to find scents like that. And for me, the one that smells the most authentic is Marlou's Carnicure. To me, mm. it smells like true deer musk without actually killing the deer to get the musk from um it's super sexy uh it like i said it smells like real deer musk it has musks i don't know what they're using to create the musk with it also has civet i'm assuming they're not killing a civet to create the so they're using civetone which is a th synthetic uh, uh, musk if you like the idea of original musk from keels but you want something that smells a little more authentic and a little animalic uh, this Carnicure is uh, the right uh, fragrance for you. It also has sandalwood, and I like the patchouli in the dry down. There's some sweetness and candy-like notes in here to give it a bit of a sweetness because I remember when smelling the real musk that uh, these ladies used to wear, there's definitely a sweetness, and I don't know if it was because the musk touched their body and it developed into a sweet smell, but there's definitely that authentic sweet uh, smell in here and a bit of floral touches from orange blossom and a violet as well. Uh, amazing fragrance. This used to be called Le Animal Sauvage, but I think because of Dior's Sauvage, they got rid of the name and changed it to Carnicure. But they actually reached, changed the name of, I think the only, yeah, they changed the name of another fragrance as well. But uh, I don't really care for the name Carnicure. I don't know what the heck it means. I really loved Le Animal Sauvage because it really was animalistic and realistic. Uh, but we're going to take what we're going to take. Um, it's a mature fragrance, but anyone that has a palate that's like open to musks and, uh, you know, different genres of perfumes is going to appreciate it. Anyone that likes animalic fragrances is going to enjoy this one. And I wouldn't say this is uber, uber animalic because they have more animalic fragrances that are over the top animalic, which I can't do. This is just the right amount, but depends on if you like animalics. If you don't, you're not going to like this one. Projection and longevity, moderate. 
compliments? Not really. Uh, maybe. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. And it might be a mature fragrance. But man, this stuff is freaking amazing. I absolutely love it. It's also not that expensive. It's like 150 for a 50 ml. And I think the fragrances I've been talking about are not the most expensive. But this stuff, if you like musks and you want to wear something that smells authentic, try this. And sometimes I layer this with original musk from Kiehl's to kind of boost up the Kiehl's. But anyway, Carnicure's Marlou is super fantastic. I hope you guys get to try it. Mm, really never, good stuff. Never heard of it. Um, I've never... I don't have I no I haven't experienced the just old fashioned real musk smell so that's intriguing to me. Do they sell samples for those who might be interested in picking up a sample? I think Lucky Scent does sell samples of those. Okay, um, yeah. people, for those of these fragrances, um, after we end, at least give me twenty four hours, I'll get with Sebastian and he'll give me his list of the fragrance that he talked about, so I can put it in the description of the title. Therefore, y'all can go back and look because that sounds like a fragrance that I will be getting a sample of. So good. Yeah, shopping list. Yes, I feel like I have to, a shopping list. That's what somebody just said. That's funny because as you was talking, I was like, I should go online and buy it right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we're down to the number one and we're ending it, people. Again, thank you all who've been hanging out. We're an hour and 30 minutes in and it's been flowing. So I'm happy. Okay, we're going number one, which is citrus. So I can go with the usual citruses. There, there's a ton of citruses. I mean, me and Sebastian can probably just do a show on citrus in general. I know one of his favorite citruses is bergamot. Um, we can go lemon. It, 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 I left this open. We probably should, with summertime, I probably should just did a video called citrus. But listen, I could go with what people would expect me to go with afternoon swim or tiger, which I both own. And I think that'd be a little bit of cop out if even one of us did that, which I was going to pull. So I'm gonna go with a fun fragrance. I'm gonna go with an affordable fragrance. I believe you can get this for under a hundred dollars. Um, this fragrance, <laughs> highly complimented, highly. Um, it comes with a, you can buy a lotion, which I use body wash, this smells like sun-kissed, the soda, when you pop it. That's what it smells like, sun-kissed soda. That's the best way to describe it. This is from the House of Floor, and this is Tangerine Boy. I've spoke about this before. It, just the spice, I believe, ginger's in here. Um, You get this juicy, tangerine, sweet, mouth-watering. This is, oh, my goodness. There's this with that ginger, it goes into the vein of something like an afternoon swim, which I do own, but it's not as watery. I still like afternoon swim better because the, it's like a, a just a bouquet of citruses. But with this is juicy tangerine and that ginger adds a bit of zing, like the carbonation of opening up a sun kissed soda. This is a fun casual fragrance, a, a great time out, one for any ages. If you're young, if you're in high school, to you 60, 70, 80, you can wear this. Cook out casual, ripping and running. It doesn't matter whatever you do. Put the lotion on. Lather yourself in the pulse points. So as your body heats up, that lotion starts to heat up. I'm going to do a video coming up on how to get the most longevity out of your fragrances, especially summer fragrances. I think people need to hear that. And that's how I get great longevity with really hydrating my skin. But with this, this is just fun. Tangerine Boy is fun. Is it my best citrus I own? No, I could have went many different places. I haven't even touched on the House of Bodicea in this <laughs> battle, which is odd. Um, But this is just fun. I can't say enough about this fragrance, and it's affordable. It's a 50 ml, but for like $100, it's affordable. You can have fun with that. So occasions already told you. Projection and longevity, I have fun with this. I'm, I'm going heavy sprays on this. Compliment rating, compliment factors through the roof. If you smell it, it's citrus, it's fun, you dress right, it's a party, you'll get the compliments in the right environment. Type of person already said age, sprays. I'm doing no, no less than 10. I'm going 15. If I'm outside and I'm going to be about, I might do 20 with the lotion. I'm outside. It's cool. Inside, like I'm going to the movies, I might do like seven, eight. 
if I'm going to be in close proximity to a lot of people, because everybody doesn't like the smell of fragrances or they can't really, you know, sometimes it could be too much. But if I'm going to be out and about, which generally is when I would wear something like this hot beaming weather, oh, I'm going 15, maybe 20 with the lotion. An amazing fragrance. And this is Tangerine Boy from the House of Floor. Easy, summer, affordable, delicious, stunning fragrance. It's, it's just fun. It's a it's, it's party in a bottle. I agree. I actually really love that stuff. Yeah, it's just so fun. And if you layer it with the lotion, it's just, yeah. yeah. It's perfect it, in the heat. I totally forgot about it. Otherwise, I would have featured it in my uh, citrus video for summer. But man, I love it. I can't believe how great it is. They launched it in the winter time, which was kind of a strange time to launch that thing. But I, I agree. It's so good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just it's not complex. It doesn't need to be. It's just it, when you want to up a fragrance that just uplift you, that can be a video. Fragrances that just uplift you like tea fragrances. And mm -hmm. that's an uplifting, just just great fragrance. It's All a right. very happy one. Absolutely. At your number one citrus, what do you have? I'll probably own it. <laughs> so this is uh, one that I'm circling back to. I'd kind of fallen off for a couple of years, but going back to the house of Perfumum Roma, and we're paying tribute to the bitter orange leaves, uh, Petagran. So we're going with Orangea from uh, Perfumum Roma. Um, I'm all about citrus. Uh, I grew up in the Mediterranean, in the Middle East, in Lebanon. So citrus is, uh, trees were a plenty. I love the flowers. I love the fruits. And I also love the leaves. Everything about that tree is freaking fantastic. And I don't mind smelling like the tree either. So this is the leaves. It has all of its bitterness of the bitter orange leaves. It also has the citrusy tartness in there as well. But there's also a woody, earthy element about the leaves as well. And they've blended it with bergamot. And so it's juicy, very, very juicy and drippy uh, citrus, which uh, the bergamot has a floral sea about it. So there's a bit of floral touch under here, uh, but it's very juicy, as I said, and they've contrasted with the bitterness and amplified the citruses because the leaves have the, um, the citrusy touches as well. There's a woody backbone here and some light aromatics, and it's very simplistic. Uh, but really, really naturalistic smelling. The only other thing about this one, there's definitely a bit of a creaminess in there. I don't know where it's coming from. And it lightly reminds me of suntan lotion. I don't know why. Uh, I'm getting like a solar sunny effect in here a little bit, which is kind of cool because we're, we're talking about a fragrance called Orangea, paying tribute to the or bitter orange tree with the pedigran leaves. But there's something, um, you know... Um, coconutty or you know beachy kind of in there which makes for a really really great wearing experience again these fragrances are linear so there's no top and a heart and the base notes it's all in one line so you can rub these fragrances they're a bit oily uh, and if you like to rub this is the kind of uh, fragrance you would wear from profume and roma it's a summer fragrance but if you need a little you know dosage of something uplifting and happy sunshine and the a winter time, this is perfect for it because it's just very sparkling and effervescent. Uh, effervescent. I wouldn't call it a big projector. Great longevity, though, especially in the heat. Uh, compliments. Uh, I know people complimented me, but they were people I know. Uh, and I think all your all ages. Uh, I think it's is a very um, crowd pleasing kind of a fragrance for sure. So Orangea from Profumum Roma is a great great fragrance. Check it out if you don't know it. Highly recommend it this was fun i'm glad that you came on um we talked about fragrances and we get right i know everybody just knew i was gonna come through with the house of bodicia which part of me wanted to do but it just kind of flowed i have them out here but it just kind of kind of flowed um when you're doing one note it's just kind of it's a it's a hit and miss on what you come across especially things that you're loving um, but I appreciate anything that you want to add or say to the people. Well, I thought I was going to be coughing up a storm. I didn't, which is kind of strange, but I did take some pills prior. Uh, I'm still getting over a bronchial infection, but uh, I didn't cough at all. I did cough while I was on mute. So, but uh, I made sure I didn't cough during the 
the live. So, but thank you so much for inviting me to do this. I learned a lot from you and uh, learned some stuff on my own, I guess. <laughs> but this was fun. And uh, no, I didn't see any uh, Bodicea from you. And I'm, I'm not the most experienced with Bodicea, but you got to check out Harmonious if you haven't checked it out yet. Really? It, it, that's the DH, DHP one, right? Yeah, 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 I, yeah. Um, I'm waiting for the right price. I've seen it floating around in the Bodicea group. Um, oh. we, we are victorious. That's a good group for those who want to get Bodicea's, especially at a pretty affordable price or the best price you're going to probably find them. Um, but with, with legit sellers or resellers, um, great stuff. That house, Christian Provenzano, you know, a lot of people say a lot of things about the house. Like sometimes they do a lot of, <laughs> some would say cloning, <laughs> Which I can see that why people feel that way. They'll take a fragrance or a DNA like they have in a vintage style of fragrance. They have DHP. They have a lot of different fragrances. But Christian Provenzano, when he does it, like I think they have a new one called Night Night of Love, which is similar to Ormond Jane's uh, Mont Back Intensivo and Verano kind of mixture, which I probably don't need it because I have those fragrances, but I'll probably get it because I absolutely love that house and. I think Christian might be my favorite perfumer at the at this point in time. Oh my god, that guy is such a nice guy. I I run into him all the time. Really, all the time. He is would, a very very nice guy. I would love to have him on a live. I'm trying to get some perfumers on a um on a live, especially some of my favorite perfumers, and get their inspirations. But again, um, Sebastian, I appreciate you coming on. You want to talk about your scent club stuff real quick before you go? Well, to... it, yeah. If you guys like discovering new fragrances, I do have scent club. Uh, we are on kit number five. I've launched five Scent Club kits. Uh, they're five ml samples like this and uh, three fragrances that I really love and speak about on the channel. Every two to three months we drop. Uh, we'll be dropping number six here in the middle of June, no, July. Uh, but we still have some lingering uh, fragrances uh, for kit number five. Uh, kit number five features uh, Parfums du Cita's Fleur de Lalita. We've got Wake Up World from Parlement de Parfum. And then we have One Day uh, Oolong Tea uh, for fragrances. And they're five ml samples. Uh, so, yeah, if you guys are interested, check it out. A uh, great way to discover new fragrances if you are kind of uh, stuck finding things that you might not know about. Thank you. Absolutely. I want you to get that plug in. People, as I always say, Versense is about celebrating some of the legends, um, so celebrating some of the newer channels. And y'all have seen who I've had on. Those, these are all people who have supported me, who have shown love. I didn't have to beg anybody to do anything. Um, Everybody who's on, I just say, hey, Sebastian, would you like? He was like, yep, I got you. <laughs> he was like, I'm traveling. I'm traveling. I'm busy, but but I'll, I'll, we can definitely do it. Um, and I didn't have to beg this man to get on. These are people, excuse me, everybody got way larger channels than me and I didn't have to beg them because we have a relationships that's established and respect um, goes back and forth. But with people, everybody, I appreciate y'all in the comments. I appreciate the 322 people who showed up. Thank you already again. know This is a celebration. Thanks, Sebastian. I want to see money in the chat <laughs> for the legend, the perfume guy. Everybody, thank you for coming out. Y'all already know how I feel about y'all. I love every one of y'all. If y'all new here, don't forget to, hit, forget to hit the like button before you leave out. And I'm going to leave you the way I greeted y'all. And that's in the universal language of peace. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>